Hello, this is Mr. Huff and I wanted to put together a short series of videos instead of a lecture because I have not been feeling well and my voice is not up to a classroom lecture and this way you can work independently and get what you need. So these are the notes for Unit 11, uh, what we have remaining. So you see uh, these videos with the handouts, uh, fill out the notes and then tape them down in your interactive notebook. All right, starting with section four, reinforcement, dissolving without water. And this is one of those exercises where you're supposed to look at the statement and rewrite it such that it is correct. And if you would like to, uh, you can just simply go through and uh, mark out the stuff that's wrong and write down what makes it correct. So the first statement is water is sometimes referred to, referred to as the universal solvent because it is a large molecule and can easily fit among other molecules of many solutes. So the wrong word here is large. It's actually a small molecule. So the correct statement is water is called the universal solvent because it is a small molecule and can fit easily among the molecules of many solutes. Given enough time, water can dissolve just about everything. Number two, polar materials have positive and negative areas. And this is more accurately stated as nonpolar materials have no separated positive and negative areas. So actually they're neutral. So we can just get rid of that. Actually that sentence doesn't make sense at all by itself. But if you put the word no in there, it makes sense. Okay. Number three, carbon and hydrogen atoms and hydrocarbon molecules share electrons unequally. And that is, that un is incorrect. Actually, carbon and hydrogen atoms share electrons in a nearly equal manner. That is the correct way to say that. Nonpolar molecules such as oil, iodine, and nail polish dissolve easily in water. And that is not true they are very difficult to dissolve in water. They dissolve very, very, very slowly. So that is the first four. Let's look at the next ones. Number five, ethanol can dissolve iodine as well as water because it has two nonpolar ends. And this is the wrong part here. It has actually a polar end and a nonpolar end. So ethanol acts as both a polar solvent and a nonpolar solvent. The oils on human skin repel dirt. No, that is not true. The oil on your skin actually attracts dirt. <coughs> when working with nonpolar solvents, good ventilation is important, important because nonpolar solvents tend to evaporate more slowly. That's not true than water and producing high concentrations of vapor. Actually, the truth is they dissolve there. They evaporate a lot faster than water. So they produce a lot of vapors. So when you're using uh, nonpolar solvents, you need to make sure you have good ventilation. Examples of this would be like the solvents you use to remove paint. You don't want to use that in a closed space. You want to make sure air is flowing around you so that those volatile solvents are and the vapors that come from them are being moved out of the room so you don't get a headache or pass out. Number eight, water soluble vitamins like vitamin A. Ooh, vitamin A is not water soluble. It's actually fat soluble. And because it is not water soluble, it can build up in our tissues and become toxic in high concentrations. You don't want to take a whole lot of vitamin A. It's bad for you. All right, fat soluble vitamins like vitamin C. Oh, that's a mistake because actually vitamin C is water soluble. And because it's water soluble, it can be flushed out of your body uh, before they can be used. And so you have to constantly replace your vitamin C. Then the last one, number 10, water molecules are attracted by and cling to molecules of nonpolar solutes, making them sticky and slowing evaporation. So actually it's not nonpolar, but water is attracted to polar solutes and that's what causes them to slowly evaporate. All right, that is enough for this one. That is reinforcement number four.